it is um, four past noon in Switzerland. It is four past eight um, in Japan. Um, I would like to welcome you all. Um, we cannot see you, but I trust that you're all well. Um, this is the third event um, within the semester of um, talks on materialisms or today on immateriality, immaterialities um, that we are organizing online. Um, and I'm very happy that we can do so. Um, in today's talk, in our last talk on materialisms, um, Taishin Shizaki and Thibaut Yonelli will be talking on Katsuo Shinohara's work and thoughts on imm immaterialities. In Katsuo Shinohara's work, buildings and texts often entered into, symbiotic rela into a symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. The Japanese architect developed concepts along abstract and prolific terms and from a close reading of his own work. In doing so, he proposed phenomena of his time as well as those of Japanese tradition. The conversation between Taishin Shiozaki and Tibor Yonelli traces the sometimes open and often hidden connections between Im immaterial and concrete objects in Shinohara's oeuvre. I would very much like to welcome our two main speakers today, um, Taishin Shiozaki from Tokyo on one side and uh, Tibor Yonelli from Zurich on the other. Taishin is a Tokyo-based architect running um, Atelier Co. Architects in Tokyo with Saiko Kobayashi. He's an associate professor at the Tokyo Institute of Technology. Born in 1976, he still is a young architect. Um, he graduated from Tokyo Tech in 2000 and received a um, doctor in engineering degree in 2009. From 2001, uh, 2000 to 2001, he visited um, Theo Delft in the Netherlands. And for three years, for two, from 2003 to six, he joined several projects of Shinohara, including posthumous work on the house in Tateshina. He's a co-editor of several magazines on Katsu Shinohara. One is the um, JA93, another one 2G, and he's a um, co-curator on uh, an exhibition called Modern Next Katsu Shinohara, which was uh, exhibited last year in 2019 in um, at the Howard at GST. He received several awards um, uh, last year, no, this year, 2020, he has received the Japanese Wood Design Award um, for um, the very beautiful work that is produced in his office. Tibo Yonelli is born in 1967 also still young. Um, he's an architect, publicist, and a teacher. He received his degree in architecture at the ETH in Zurich and worked in numerous well-known Swiss architecture offices. Next to his practice, he has led atelier discourses with Swiss architects, such as Christian Keritz, Valerio Giatti, and Livio Vacchini. He has published numerous essays and articles in architecture magazines, and he has edited several books in 2020. Just very recently, he has published a book called Shinoristics, an essay about a house, a book about the Japanese architect Katsuo Shinohara. Yonelli has taught at the Budapest University of Technology, the ETH Zurich, and the University of Liechtenstein. 
He currently lectures in the architectural criticism in architectural criticism, criticism at the University of Applied Science in Winterthur and is an editor of the Swiss architectural magazine Werk Baunen and Wohnen. He is engaged in several book projects as well is in, as in an architectural practice. Um, the idea is um, that Taishin and Tibor will um, give short inputs about their thoughts on the work of Shinohara. Um, and that we will then engage into a discussion or they will engage into a discussion. And um, a dear colleague of mine, Annika Seifert, who, uh, whom you are seeing, seeing on the screen as well, and myself um, will be at the end of this talk, um, will be moderating um, your questions um, as well as um, you know, um, getting into the discussion as well. You are most welcome to um, write your questions in the chat or um, in the F and A section on the bar uh, on the lower side of your screen. Um, Annika Seifert, um, just to also introduce her, is a, as I said, a colleague. Um, from the School of Architecture in Lucerne. She's a professor and um, is, is responsible together with Luca Deon for our studio and focus in energy in the master program. Um, she will be bridging uh, from next year on also into the bachelor program. And I think this is extremely important and something that we're really trying to establish is to have um, our teaching staff um, in, in the bachelor and in the master program. But this is a different subject. I would like now again to welcome our two speakers, Taishin Shiozaki and Tibor Yonelli, and the screen is yours. Thank you very much for being with us. So may I start that? Please do so. Okay. Uh, thank you for kindly introducing me and also thank you for inviting me in this, in this difficult situation of the world. I'm Taishin Shiozaki. I will share the screen. Yoisho. Can you see that? Yes, we can see. Okay, uh, firstly, I would like to say again, thank you very much for Tivo and Johannes and Anika and Heike and all of other stuffs. Uh, I heard this is a lunch meeting, lunch lecture. So please listen with a relax lunch. So uh, I'm happy to talk here today. I will talk about immateriality. It's difficult words, uh, through Professor Shinohara's work. So a little bit, I'm scared for his voice from the sky. So just now I added his face because I heard some of you might don't know the, his face. This is Shinohara sensei. So, uh, Topic, immateriality sounds difficult, but sounds exciting topics. Today I will talk about two houses uh, designed by Shinohara. Please listen carefully, otherwise my English pronunciation is bad. I thought uh, I will have the presentation after Tibo today, but uh, so that so that is why I bring Tani Kawa house, but he said you are fast, so he's very gentleman. So I will talk first. Uh, anyway, uh, very congratulations on the publication, Shinoha, Shinoharistics. This is also a difficult word. Um, honestly, I, I could not finish to read everything yet, but 
that topic is quite interesting. Of course, uh, there is uh, several difficult words in it. Today, I will try to connect his contents. So, uh, Shinohara designed two residences that features a, a sloping mound of earth within interior space, like this. This is a, a Tanikawa house built in the resort town of Karuizawa in 1974. It's a beginning of his Shinohara's third style. The client is the poet Shuntaro Tanikawa. It's, he is a very famous poet in Japan. And the other is uh, his posthumous work that was never completed. This is a scale model picture. Uh, House in Tatishina, it is designed for his own and his daughter's family situated in Nagano. So today I would like to attempt to find the links between these two houses, houses and think how Shinohara twice created an inexplicable, difficult to explain situations involving sloping ground within an interior space. Uh, then I would also like to attempt to find some differences between them through thinking about his stance for the style. So today I want to discuss about material. So when we think about the word material, in Japanese there is two translation words, bushitsu and sozai. Uh, bushitsu is a kind of uh, chemical feeling, chemical material or micro material. On the other hand, sozai is a feeling of components or actual concrete material. So uh, when we think about the material, uh, we feel these two aspects. Actually, bushitsu is a in original Chinese character it, that meaning is uh, object and characteristics. And the other sozai is, uh, the original meaning is original and component. Then, uh, by the way, suddenly, uh, when I was a child, I often used to play around this kind of embankment near my house. I used to play with mud. Uh, bank or embankment is a dote, we, we say, or mud is a doro. And today's topic, one of the topic, earth and floor is doma, and ground of earth is daichi. So you can see the, this D sound have a wet and hot meaning in Shinohara's word. And maybe, uh, I think this kind of earth ground is a material that resonated with the heart of child. At the same time, it was a natural substance that was relatively easy to gain access to nature in our town. So uh, when we think about the meaning of immateriality and immateriality, this viewpoint is important. Witness and meaningfulness was, uh, and maybe uh, history, it was uh, erased in the modernism period. We can say uh, it is a fast dematerialty. And uh, in the maybe 60s and 70s in Japan and in the world, hot meaning uh, shifted to the cold and zero meaning. Maybe we can say that is the second dematerialty and based on the semiology and structural rhythm. So I want to talk about the kind of uh, materia, materiality, maybe. And Shinohara designed several houses with using the earthen floor, the kind of floor of uh, materiality, ma material. 
This other floor is the vo vocabulary of Japanese tradition. This is House of Earth, same year with House in White. Uh, abstraction is important methodology in his works, but this architecture vocabulary, vocabulary like as and floor uh, with full of materiality is not erased in his this period, uh, but he abstracts the form. This is very important things. This is uh, different from the way of modernism maybe. And the other, uh, this is a house with an earthen floor, uh, 1963. Uh, this shows very primitive division of his methodology. Interesting point is uh, we, we can find uh, the beginning of fissure space in this house. Uh, this is a plan of the house with an earthen floor. Uh, uh, this divisional method was extracted from the analysis for the Japanese traditional folk house. It starts from the looking at this kind of primitive pit house, which having four columns in the room. This column is moving to the uh, surrounded wall like this can can you see my pointer no yes okay so the uh, he he focused on this kind of things and doma is a very primitive his vocabulary in his project and because of the the crumb shifted to the surrounding walls they can divide the room into doma and sleeping space nema and in this uh, developed version, uh, they can divide more and make two rooms near the doma. So this is the original of house of house with other floor. And uh, the house in white is the destination of this kind of divisional method. And on the other hand, if the housing white is a white side, this is a project of black side, uh, full of materiality. This is a space in black, uh, 1964 maybe. Uh, every space is underneath the ground and each room is independent and connected by corridor. This is uh, the conceptually original of House of Earth. And quickly, I will show the conceptual matrix. Uh, Shinohara used uh, many dual concepts. For example, this methodology is the division and connections. But at the same time, he used a sort of dual phenomenon. So each notion has a, a box side notions. Division has a oneness and connection has uh, independence. And he referred the uh, Japanese traditional architecture and the European traditional architecture when he think about this kind of concept. And uh, the, the white, white side, I said, is uh, this kind of divisional methodology. And the black side is a uh, this right side methodology, space in black and M space and Asakura's house was designed specially in this side. And this side is continuing to the Fisher space of the of, uh, second style. So I will show uh, several uh, similar project. This is a archetypal house in 1964. It was put in the exhibition. And this looks similar, but different project, M Space House. You can see the, the beginning of the Fisher space here. Okay, the, the kind of project is treated in this first style. Uh, 
And uh, today we want to talk about we want to talk about Tanika House and housing partition project. Okay, I will quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, okay, this is a Tateshina house. Ah, no, sorry, Tanikawa house. It is the beginning of his third style and second house of Tanikawa-san. A strong characteristic is this sloping ground. This is the elevations. And this is a plan, this uh, big space is a sloping ground space. And uh, this space make very unstable feeling. At least it was not comfortable, but of course strong. It looks beautiful. And Isozaki also mentioned about the kind of unstable feeling here. And Shinohara started to use the word concrete from the third style with referring urban situations. Concrete is a concrete object or elements. Until second style, he always mentioned about abstractions and component, uh, and it is still important keyword for him in this period as well. But the feeling of concrete is added just from here. So uh, in his concept, this sloping ground is of course surrounding situations, but it is just an angle here. He thinks about the kind of by chance crash or sudden crash. This is uh, one of maybe transversality. Uh, here I introduce one important person for Shinohara, Kojitaki. Kojitaki is a philosopher and took photograph of Shinohara's works. He's important uh, person when, uh, how to say, the, he imported the semiology or the uh, pheno phenomenology into Japanese architecture field in 60s and 70s. Then from discussion with him, Shinohara catch, just catch the several ideas, for example, machine and zero degree or naked space, etc. And uh, Shinohara said, the pillar is just a pillar, a wall is just a wall. So there is no other meaning. Then he used the word naked space for that kind of characteristics. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, you can see this interesting uh, ladder. So there is an original reference. You can see the, uh, this is the Atelier Cezanne. Uh, as you know, Cezanne painted upwards, seeing from several positions from on the floor or from uh, the top of the ladder. So uh, this kind of, uh, how to say, a uh, strange position to see the apple makes uh, uh, several types of apple in the one campus. So I remember Cezanne's painting when I see the by chance crash of several strange naked concrete object under the geometric structure of Shinohara. So the, his view through concrete object is a jump from abstraction, which he deal with in first and second style. This is a house in white masterpiece in first style. And of course the third style is connected to his fourth style. This is a house in Yokohama of fourth style. Uh, these two houses, House in White and House in Yokohama are the self-reference works when he designed House in Tateshina, his final post-humorous work. So uh, this is House in Tateshina. I, uh, from 2003 to 2006, I assisted Shinohara for the design of this heart. 
uh, this is the smallest project for him and final project. Uh, this is the elevation. This scale model is uh, exhibit, exhibited in China. This is plan, very simple and small section and elevations. Tatishina was used for the cover of the book several times. This is a book in China and this is a uh, as you know, the Velk edited by Thibault. I guess this scale model was made by uh, Pas Pascal Flamma, maybe. And this is the, his uh, complete works book. And this sketch is a uh, uh, house in Tatishina. Uh, Shinohara left, be left behind more than 800 sketches for the house in Tatishina, like this. When we think about materiality, these sketch lines are very interesting. The texture and uh, feeling of Shinohara's sketches consist of a bunch of lines. And, and uh, they constantly seek out a kind of original line that belongs to himself. And he also make these different types of sketches. We can point out the uh, discreteness maybe. And this discreteness is connected from the concept of four style. It's very strange sketches from the many, many uh, directions he drew that. So this is house in Yokohama. He focused on the conjunctions of geometrical object. So uh, it is also continuation from the third style. And you can see the same types of operation in house in Tatishina. He always talked to me during the designing house in Tatishina. He referred to context of House in White and House in Yokohama. And he said Tatishina ride on the context of House in White. This is House in White. So uh, we do not have time anymore. <laughs> uh, two houses, both has a sloping ground. There is a 30 years gap. Let's quickly check his text about style in maybe one or two minutes. So, uh, yes, uh, he used the uh, anti space to jump over the current style to the next. So, then when I read this kind of text, I cannot think these two sloping ground in Tanikao House and House in Tatishina. Uh, is uh, not same types of meaning or the way of immateriality. He said he connected the context of housing white finally. Then that means this sloping ground of housing Tatishina is more similar to the meaning of the column of housing white, I think, and it make a beautiful Circle. I mean, the, the house in Tatishina is a final project in the fourth style. And in the first style, he referred the Japanese traditions. And I guess finally he moved again to the starting point to refer the mother ground, mother earth ground nature. Then he made it the abstract geometry. Okay, sorry for the too much explanation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Taishin. Um, we would have, I think, all loved to listen to more of your um, talk and um, 
uh, seeing the beautiful projects that you've been showing. But um, I would like to ask um, Tibor to um, continue from his side. Um, we're very Thank much you. looking forward. So good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. So you see the slide with Fino heuristics on. I hope so. so yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, it's a great honor and a pleasure to have the occasion to hold this short input lecture here and to lead uh, afterwards a talk with uh, Shio Tsaki Sensei. Um, thank you, Johannes, very much for the invitation and thank you, Heike, for organizing all this. Um, thank you in advance, Annika, for, um, for uh, somehow transferring the questions of the participants of the webinar and to our uh, discussion um, room. Um, and thank you, Taishin, for accepting the invitation to discuss our issues here. Um, Taishin, of course, uh, didn't absolutely mention that um, talking about Shinhara is uh, quite difficult. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there is one small sentence that when he mentioned um, that maybe Katsushina Hara is sitting up there and listening to a lecture and, um, and he's a little bit afraid of uh, saying something which may be not really correct. But um, I think it's very important to be in a way incorrect, but also stay with like incorrect in, in a way and kind of a speculation about um, the work of Shinohara. Um, this of course has to be, this of course has to happen within the frame of uh, facts and of what we know. Um, unfortunately, we don't know too much. Um, this holds, especially for us Westerners who do not read and do not speak Japanese. It was great for me to see that, and I'm looking very forward to some more articles from Taishin, um, uh, where Shinohara's thoughts are translated into English. So um, this is the situation why I coined the term Shinoristics, uh, because as I said, it's extremely difficult to find scientific sound results on the architecture of Katsuo Shinohara. The term is an allusion to Stanislav Lem's sci-fi novel Solaris, wherein the animatic planet, so this is in a way the protagonist of the, of the novel, um, uh, with the same name is theorized upon extremely limited available data. Um, to produce fruitful insights of Machine O'Hara, one needs to use some, <laughs> some fantasy or at least some external tools, if you don't speak Japanese. Um, uh, and uh, this situation is maybe comparable to the space station where the plot of the novel Solaris takes place. So I like this image here uh, for two reasons. Um, it really looks, the house, Tonika house, looks like a space station and the image was never published before. So it's very rare. And as you see, it's just a paper copy of, uh, of the negative. So it never was authorized by the architect to publish that image. So I choose um, mainly uh, an a, a, a philosophical framework uh, um, to, to talk about Shinohara. It's um, uh, first, it's um, ontology and Second, it's object-oriented object ontology. I based my um, inquiries mainly on two authors, um, Graham Harmon and Levy Bryant. So why? Um, I see two sufficient reasons. Uh, first is that the philosopher Levy Bryant was very fond with the concept of the machine. According to the French psychiatrist Félix Guattari and his companion, the philosopher Gilles Deleuze, and the latter played an important role for Shinohara, as Tashin has already mentioned. Um, but uh, 
as some of you may know, um, reading Deleuze and Qatari, so Dolce and Gabbana, D and G, um, sometimes it's a little bit uh, weird uh, because they always try to incorporate process of their thinking within their texts, uh, which doesn't make it really easy. Um, a second reason why maybe triple O um, is suitable uh, to talk about or for talking about Shinohara is that um, Graham Harmon uh, has developed a philosophy which is a very a rigid system. So, um, and the interesting thing is that this very rigid system gives space to smooth phenomena. <laughs> and without going to details, I think that Shinohara was an architect who tried to reach similar effects with his designs. Um, he, he coined rigid concepts and they produced soft spaces. So I see there a kind of um, similarity in the way uh, of thinking. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the time to go into details here of triple O, so this is the abbreviation of uh, object-oriented ontology. Let me just briefly summarize what it's about. It's all about objects, as the name says, be it material, immaterial, human or not. Um, objects. And it's all about the medi mediation of yet these objects through other objects. I can highly recommend this, reading these books. Um, Graham Harmon in particular is interesting for Shinohara. Um, this holds because um, Shinohara as well was interested in objects. He wrote in 1964 that he's interested in objects that perform architectural space. So this performing, this idea of production and performance must be kept in mind. And the second is um, that uh, the coinage of immaterialism um, uh, puts emphasis on objects rather than on relations. Maybe some of you know that now we're relations um, in or quite important in talking about um, about architecture and uh, uh, Graham Harmon wants to um, change that in a way. Um, it can be, immaterialism can also be seen as a kind of critique and further development proceeding of uh, Bruno Latour's actor network theory. Um, immaterialism gives an idea on how Shinohara was influenced by his texts and when I speak say texts, uh, I mean texts as material objects, um, let's say the publication within a book uh, or a magazine uh, or the paper you hold in your hands and reading it. Um, and of course, it's also an immaterial product because you don't can't really grasp what is written in the text. I'll give you an example, the text, The House is Art, um, which was written by Shinohara very early, seems to be an object that is extremely influential on his later thinking. So I think it was 64, 1964. And uh, it took about 10 years with Tony Kawa House where the architect really created the house um, that is an art object. Um, this also holds for the designs of Shinohara, um, which he in a way seemed to dissect after completion um, to produce new concepts. So every house influenced the following designs. Uh, but as triple O is all about objects, there are also difficulties with Shinohara. Um, uh, we see Graham Harmon uh, teaches at SciArc in California. Uh, this is a school which is not really known for a continental or oriental approach towards architecture. Um, this is a project, project uh, made uh, by Mark Foster Gage, and it's a skyscraper which is, in a way, assembled uh, from completely distinct entities, completely distinct symbolic forms, completely distinct elements. And uh, it is highly parametric because uh, I think this is the main problem of the architect's uh, um, reception of, of triple O, that um, triple O share similarities with object-oriented programming. And this leads in a way to an architecture like that. 
But if we look back to Shinohara, here we see House in Hanayama number four. It's dated uh, from 1980. And this is almost the same, but it looks more like an actual architectural answer to this parametric expressionism of Foster Gage. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, Back to the Future uh, when I look at this image. So it's even more modern than what we have seen before, I think. Uh, the technical object we see here, um, or we saw before, was inspired by what we see here. Um, this is a space machine, of course, and the term can easily be transferred, as Shinohara did, to the realm of architecture. As architecture is a thing which is connected or an assembled, architectures are always assembled from distinct parts. Um, in architecture, an analogous object is not floating in or through space, but it um, merely produces space. So this is the main uh, difference um, in the analogy. Um, this is very important um, for my book uh, because I think that the idea of producing something is um, creating distinct objects as well. So this, in a logical um, thought, uh, means that space itself is a, an autonomous object, um, like any object that is produced by a machine. So if we speak about um, space in Shinohara, we really speak, uh, speak about objects. This uh, one we know, we have seen that already in, in uh, Tai Shin's lecture. Um, uh, this is Tony Kawa House. Um, this is the first design, not the first text, but it's the first design where the idea of uh, the space machine or machine um, uh, was developed. I can, in brief, tell how this machine works. We see this uh, slope, uh, sloping ground, uh, which was already mentioned, but uh, the space is uh, some kind um, developed between uh, or created between this sloping ground, which has a very natural expression and the geometric uh, orthogonal roof um, and the structure. So Shinohara spoke about the oppositions um, in his design. And you can imagine like, a, like in a dynamo where you have the plus and the minus and between that you have this movement. So something like really a machine that creates space. Oops. Um, uh, we have other uh, oppositions. We have this large summer space. Um, it was described by the client as a church for a pantheist. And we have a kind of holiday home, a small holiday home adjacent, adjacent to it, um, which was described as a pioneer's cabin. Um, both um, spaces, they do communicate uh, via this um, triangle or gable window. So somewhere there is also um, very interesting or an important interface to um, set in motion this um, uh, space dynamo. dynamo. Um, space here is related, of course, with uh, the movement of a person or of persons. Um, maybe we could talk later about that. Tashin um, mentioned that uh, ladder, this very strange ladder, um, steams from the atelier um, of a French painter and um, his idea or how, how his, his, um, what he says about it, that it was possible for the painter to see objects from above, maybe gives a clue to the term Shinhara was coining when he was um, uh, uh, writing about his house, um, the coin of the third object. So this could be discussed later on. Uh, space in the Tanikawa house is produced ad hoc through an assemblage or symbiosis of architectural elements and a person or a human figure. Um, here, some interesting misunderstandings do occur. Um, uh, this is something I found um, during the research or the, the recherche for the preparation of this lecture because if you have a look at the project from Herzog und Demeron, it's pretty a surprise that the Swiss architects didn't come to similar findings when they were invited to contribute in a letter exchange 
with Shinohara on the topic of virtuality. So the topic was raised on the occasion of an exhibition and an issue of the Japanese magazine Space Design about Swiss architecture curated by the young Momoyo Kajima. Although Herzog and Dumoulin were mentioning the Lego project that is depicted in this slide, the two Swiss missed almost completely Shinohara's point and they eventually engaged in a discourse about materiality, uh, a discourse with which the Japanese master bluntly declined to enter. So I will uh, cite uh, in a minute about that. Moreover, even Shinohara, I would say, missed the point as he narrowed the term virtuality towards its context of the World Wide Web. We, you have to know that in triple O, object-oriented ontology, the term wide virtuality has, um, and also in Deleuze, it has a slightly different meaning than um, and it is popular. Uh, I think it's worth to stay for a glimpse with the Swiss Japanese discourse and the beautiful talk past each other. So I will cite first Herzog und Dumont. Dear Katsuo Shinohara, when SD magazine asked us to enter into a dialogue with you, time was already too short to work on completely new texts for our first mutual exchange of ideas about city, tradition and similar issues. So this is not very polite. Um, we picked a text we had written and worked on very recently because we found it especially interesting in the context of your work and of our work. The text and the text had been written in order to accompany the project for a virtual house commissioned by the magazine Annie. In fact, the commission was absurd. Virtual House also treats issues of materiality and immateriality, which seem to be key issues in. Uh, in your own research over the years. One of those immaterial qualities is resulting from the names you are giving to some of your buildings, e.g. house in a crooked road, sky rectangle and others. The names are adding a virtual dimension to these architectures comparable to titles for works of art. So in a way they realized what's going on with Shinohara, but I, but I think they weren't really exact and maybe they uh, lacked of course the knowledge of uh, triple O. So Shinohara replied very bluntly, however, as it turned out, your letter concerns an issue in which I have no particular interest, namely virtual forms related to the internet. I told the editor I wish to decline the opportunity to reply since there was not much connection to the original subject as I had understood it. I skip a lot. Um, I believe that those buildings like the Katsura Detached Palace in Kyoto or the Jiji Queen in Nara, that these buildings like other sub super cultural assets are strangely attractive as fictional or virtual spaces because a mechanism that transcends everyday actuality is activated on some level of the material presence called architecture and its effect is reinforced by conditions such as the passage of historical time and observations from a different cultural sphere. I like fiction and the working workings of its mechanism. So this really implies that fiction or immateriality, Im immateriality can really cause or produce material effects. This is, I think, a quite an interesting thought. Um, let's make up for the missed opportunity. The term virtuality shows to be very prolific for Shinoristics. As a matter of fact, I always felt that Shinohara spaces follow a kind of hidden or tacit design that virtually or even substance are notions that can be strongly related to them. The key to such an understanding must be searched in Shinohara's use of the term topology. Shinohara very often used technical terms from mathematics as metaphors. Topology appears quite often in his texts, but it is highly unclear what topology could mean, at least for Westerners lacking the possibility, possibility to read and understand Japanese. But my own research in Tonikawa has showed that topology and transversality must be quite closely connected. So transversality comes from, from Deleuze, from the book that Tashin cited. I am not a mathematician, therefore I cannot really interpret or even weigh a sentence as the following. 
Um, in differential topology, transversality is defined in relation to perturbation theory as a sufficient condition for an intersection to be stable after a perturbation. So the space of Tony House or the architectural, the, let's say crystalline architectural um, is in a way perturbed by the inclined um, slope. Isn't that a beautiful metaphor for the summer space in Tony House? However, there are other ways to understand the use of the word topology in Shinohara. First, we have to go back to 64 to a text uh, the architect named the three primary spaces and to a general spatial concept that the architect was casting into words. So please apologize for this clumsy drawing. Uh, it's an attempt by myself to depict Shinohara's idea. It's an abstract model of architectural space base that the architect conceptualized as a cylinder. So we see here um, spaces created um, or spaces depicted as surfaces that are defined by separating lines. So these are these lines, these brown lines here. They, in a way, in a mathematical, mathematical way, um, span spaces. So we have an ornamental space, we have a symbolic space, and we have a functional space. And these segments, they all together create uh, some, something like a, like a symbolic space. Uh, like a, like a, excuse me, architectural space. So uh, an architect's design, which is indicated here with this round um, uh, square, may traverse these surfaces, bringing them together in a conceptual way and to a stable condition. Shinoir called this uh, the person personality of the of the space. Uh, transversality is already apparent, though not literal. So this came ten years later. It becomes explicit. Um, 10 years later in the design of Tony Kawahas. The scheme can be seen as something like a topological design template. Uh, 1966, so two years after um, the article, um, a space of Shinohara looks like that. We know the house already, it's house in white, um, and it's not a cylinder, of course. Um, but if we look attentively on that photo, the cylinder reappears in a topological way um, topology merely means, roughly speaking, the persistence of fundamental geometric properties, such as place or loca location when a geometric object is morphed. If you keep that in mind, we see different spaces as defined by Shinohara. We have here ornamental space. Um, this is not really a shoji window. It looks like a shoji window, so it has an or ornamental quality here again. We have a symbolic space, which is created uh, through this column. It has a certain connotation, a certain symbolic connotation. Also, the small window here has a certain um, symbolic connotation. And we, of course, have a functional space. If we have a look at this uh, um, box here with the kitchenette. The box, like space of the house in white, in fact, uh, if we have a look at it topological is the same as our cylinder from before. The user on, or the viewer of that space traverses the different fields of that hidden cylinder. So it's an immaterial cylinder, which in a way creates a material architecture space. The three primary spaces also occur in Tanikawa House. We have here um, ornamental space. I think these strange windows are an echo of the tatami, uh, of the excuse me, of the shoji, um, of the shoji windows. It's an adaptation. We have a symbolic space which is created through this uh, mud um, uh, slope, sloped mud. Um, the earth floor produces in a way naked reality. So this is um, something different. And we have the sachliche post, which in a way is symbolic or which is functional. I'm not really clear about that. But we have of course functional space, which can be found in the storage room in the toilet and the kitchen, etc. cetera. Um, behind this gable window, we have a tatami um, room, which of course is also highly symbolic. Let us now very briefly have a look at the second way how topology could have been conceptualized. We will get uh, there by a comparison of Tanikawa's with House in Yokohama. 
we know all this, um, uh, but not unlike the main part of Tonikawa House, House in Yokohama seems to be pure architectural space. As a matter of fact, Shinohara used the house only as a tea house for representative purposes and not to live in it. Um, this holds even if we consider the fact that the house may has many features that could be used in normal ways in, in the everyday. Uh, the house shares conceptual similarities with Tanikawa House. Um, just note, notice the strong split into an upper and a lower part, um, which was in the Tanikawa House, the church for the Pantheist and the Pioneer Cabin. And this is even emphasized by the strongly uh, um, uh, addition or, or, or a distinction of a strange Apollo Mooncraft-like cabin that Shinohara named crow, crow's nest, crow's nest, or simply storage room. The different and clearly distinct parts produce something that Shinohara called progressive anarchy. But beside that, the different elements also produce a certain kind of performative space, not unlike in Tanikawa House. So they really produce space. We may sum up what we have found so far and try to conceptualize what we have seen. Um, first, we have to note that again, we have here the cylinder. The cross nest is a cylinder, but this part here is also a quart of a cylinder. It is, the cross nest is very highly symbolic. It's nearly unusable. The views and the, the windows and the views, they are very ornamental. So they just, they just give some impressions of the outside. It's a, a very ornamental, very just for beauty, let's say. And of course we have the kitchen here as a functional um, space. Space itself is also traversal. So it, uh, it is, um, it is uh, only occurring or it, it is developed when a person trans transverses this space. And it can be also as in Tonikawa House um, uh, be described as a set of axes. So the comparison of the two houses gives another perspective on topology. Um, we see, um, although these two houses are very, very different, if we have a look at them uh, in that way, we see only one simple plan. So we have the, this large space here. We have the stair, which has an echo, or we have we have the bench, which has an echo here in the stair and, and the kitchenette. We have the different views, like in a train, like when you move in a train, you have two sides. Um, you, we have functionals, we have some kind of this, this, this very small pioneer cabin. Pioneer cabin can be seen also the Apollo moon lander. This one can be seen as a, as a pioneer cabin. So it's very interesting how he again um, chose to, to, to make this kind of plan um, almost, um, yeah, almost 10, more than 10 years later. Certain notions such as transversality, machine or topology, etc., seem to be the immaterial residues for Shinohara's designs. They are all productive in the real sense of the word. And when confronted with a certain task or place, they seem to have released varying design phase spaces. This is not a word Shinohara used, and, we, and this finds also an echo in triple O. Shinohara's method in itself resembles a topological operation wherein the basic properties of a concept are translated and varied with every design into a range of several possible solutions. If you come back to Levi Bryant, who has been mentioned in the very beginning of this lecture, the architect's method itself looks like, like a machine. It's a plastic machine. It works surprisingly smoothly and reliably. reliably. Um, small changes in the input, so uh, let's say the task um, uh, and the processor, so this is the architect, lead to large differences in the output. Last slide. I think this is the only way to understand Shinohara's own separation of his work into style uh, uh, without questioning his own authorship. So he could really change his, uh, his mind or his designs um, while staying uh, himself. Um, we have touched now Shinohara's concept of the machine and its wild space only on its margins. A closer reading of it has to be postponed now. 
In my lecture, I also insinuated that immaterialism in Shinar could have other meanings than the topological ones I have mentioned here. One might, one might think of his latest projects and the mathematical, physical, or even biological metaphors he used to describe them. So uh, we have seen how Sintate is Shinar. But we must postpone this investigation as well. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Tibor. It was intense. And um, I'm looking forward to reading your book. Um, so um, I think the, the idea is um, that you two, um, Taishin and Tibor, um, start with a with an, a discussion, asking questions, um, re remarking. Um, so may I ask you to to do that. Okay, so maybe um, I have a question first uh, to Taishin. Um, I think you're, you wrote your PhD about uh, terms influencing the works of architects. Yes. And did you find in Shinohara um, some main or crucial points you were suggesting Japanese um, words or Japanese terms as doma, noma, um, highly influential um, in his designs and did you, you also mentioned that you worked together with, uh, with Shinohara. Did he speak about um, issues like that? Mm, so the, maybe related to today's award presentations, the, for example, the naked space of machine and some other uh, savage space or the kind of the, uh, semiological term is quite important word for Shinohara and that is uh, also the of course it, it is uh, uh, he he extracted from the semiology and some other uh, field but he translated in his own concept in his own coined word then maybe uh, our, we, we should talk about the interesting term of, uh, it's a difficult word, transversality in Japanese mm -hmm. Odan. Uh, that, is of, that is also the key word, not only in the third style of Tanikawa House, but also the, the it is important Terms when we think about the jump from jump from the previous style to the next style, and how how uh, how do you think about this word uh, in your analysis in your book? How how did you check check this word? Yeah, I think. Yeah. It's very, very important, um, but mm -hmm. uh, I think he didn't use it too much. Mm. Maybe you, you would agree. I think uh, I, I have discovered it only once in this text he wrote about Tony Coverhouse. Oh, yeah. mm. But um, let's say let's let's say it that way. Literature um, that goes back to um, uh, Felix Guattari, who has coined mm -hmm. uh, uh, this term, mm -hmm. sees many analogies in how Felix Guattari, as a psychiatrist, um, uh, tried to relate unrelated things to create something in a group mm. dynamic, uh, psychiatric environment, mm. um, which is quite, comes quite close to what Shinohara tried to reach with his, his designs. So 
you also mentioned that in many of his designs, you see something like a detachment. You have different things. They are not really related. And uh, uh, within that, if a person moves through these spaces, um, different architectural elements are related mm. through transversality. Mm. Um, when we talked before, you mentioned that um, this notion of all done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I googled, of course, and I saw only crossings of um, of streets. So young children yeah, crossing the street. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is. But you you said that there must be something um, uh, uh, related to Shinohara. What does that, or to transversality? What does this odon mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, he mentioned this word twice. One is, as you mentioned, in the uh, across uh, in, in English, across the naked something naked space, maybe mm -hmm. in the in the article. Uh, oh, when, when he, naked space is transversed, yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. When he published the Tanikawa House, then the other is uh, he he. He wrote an article in his in his monograph workbook in the uh, 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 previous workbook. Then he mentions three transversality is important for him. The the one is uh, the cube cube style. That means the second style. That that is a uh, that is in between the first style and third style, the cube across the kid style, maybe. And the second is uh, uh, you mentioned third person, right? In your book, S third, third person, third, third person, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. that kind of transversality of third person, and it is maybe quite related to his uh, his urban, urbanism. And <clears throat> so third person is uh, to literally, it's an idea uh, to uh, the third person across the, across in the street. <laughs> mm -hmm. And his urbanism is uh, two types. One is a chaotic, City, he he mentioned in the fourth style, chaos system. He mm -hmm. focused on that is the one his urban theory, and the other is uh, he likes street and human shadow. Mm -hmm. yeah. like this kind of yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, so he likes a kind of feeling the the atmosphere of the street which uh, can have the human shadow that is a maybe second transversality and third one is the uh, his how to say uh, contemporary urban situations because uh, in this Early in the 70s, he firstly traveled to the, the abroad. Then he got some feeling from Africa and Europe. Then he catch he caught something and extract that. Yeah. What do you what do you think? What does this Oda mean in Japanese? Um uh, Oda means so ne. Yeah, it's a uh, the literally it's a uh, meaning the cross the street or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But in a way, it I think it, this is very interesting because because it it is a word which is used in Japanese mm. normally, and. Um, I think that, um, as you were mentioning, that um, the way how people um, are 
walking through a street or how how what you s s summarized on the, on the, on the, under the term urbanism so 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 the way mm -hmm. how shinohara saw urbanism um, must have been something very very important for him so uh, i think it may may maybe it, it it was even the idea to um, create urban spaces within his houses would you mm -hmm. agree with that yeah, I agree on that. And when we think about, and when he think about Odin, the human and object is a very, uh, I, I think in his mind, it's a very equivalently exist. So from that viewpoint, I can understand you mentioned about object oriented ontology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was excited when you show when you showed us uh, the comparison between the Tanikawa House and House in Yokohama, because that plan is uh, quite different when we see just on the plan. Mm -hmm. But maybe the uh, what he deal with the element, I mean architectural element is quite a uh, very similar operation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe the in Tanikawa house, of course, the uh, sloping ground is one is a uh, Odan element, you know, the transversality element. Mm -hmm. And of course that is uh, just a uh, object, one of object from the, the earth but he deal with the kind of uh, sloping ground as a element or as just a number of angle. And mm -hmm. gradually he shifted to use the kind of things as a, not architectural element, but a geometrical ornament, as you mentioned. Then maybe in house in Yokohama, uh, it is a, it, there is still hierarchy. There is a main volume and sub volume, mm -hmm. but but that's the operation to deal with the object is a, has a similarity from third style to fourth style. I agree on that. How do you think I mean, that? it's interesting what you said um, that in the Tanikawa house the angle of the slope was the only thing that he was interested in. Mm. I don't, I hope I understood you correctly. So um, this really is also um, in the context or can be seen in the context also of this lecture as an immaterial quality, mm. which in a way um, uh, creates a very material effect or a material space, which really can be sensed as a space itself. Um, did you really think that in, in such an abstra abstract way um, uh, about architecture? And wasn't he really interested in, let's say, materiality, the quality of the material in light, atmosphere, etc. Hmm. This suggests in a way that he doesn't he did he did he, he did wasn't really interested in 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 what Herzog und Dömeron call the materiality hmm. of the surfaces and and, and, oh. and things like that. May, yeah. may I also may I just add something to that question, and maybe also Annika and I can can kind of jump in because there's so many kind of extremely interesting <laughs> aspects you're talking about, and there's so many open questions. Talking about that that slope um, uh, in an angle, uh, my feeling also is that it kind of adds to to physicality. Because we as humans, we are, you know, when we build houses, we're used to absolutely flat, and this is what we're looking for, no? Absolutely flat floors. And the floor in, in, somehow kind of disappears because um, there's, we, we know 
what it is like and we you know we maybe perceive it as a certain material we can feel it as being warm or cold or stone or wood but the moment you start to have a slope um, the space seems to me to become you know in a house of course we all know what it is like walking on a mountain but the space becomes like super physical mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also the floor as an object, right? Yeah. Suddenly kind of mm -hmm. becomes a relevant mm -hmm. actor. It becomes present as an object. It's yeah. very current. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. But it's strange, I don't know, um, uh, Atashin, how you experienced the space of Tony Cover House. Um, yes. it, is, it is some kind of subliminal um, uh, uh, issue. So you don't really realize that the space is a slow, but you have to move on it. It's not a space yeah, yeah, where you yeah, can yeah. sit down or yeah, enjoy. The, okay. Yes, the yeah, both the Johannes and Thibault's uh, comment is quite interesting because. Uh, Maybe in the, our daily life, we don't see the floor as object. Mm -hmm. But if we walk around that kind of sloping ground in, in interior space, we must realize the, that floor is also object, object. Then we think about the relationship between the floors and columns and walls. So uh, that, that operation to put the, uh, the sloping floor as an object underneath the geometrical structures of Tanikawa house, because that uh, roof structure has a very geometrical angle, 45 degrees. And then that, sloping ground strange angle makes us quite unstable feeling mm -hmm. maybe. So how, how did you feel when you entered the tiny cover house people? It was complicated. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was extremely complicated to get there. And um, so we were some kind of um, Pre, there was a predisposition um, when we when we came there, and unfortunately, um, the, the the windows they were completely um, opaque because um, because of the of the mud inside. So you had this small uh, damp on on, on 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 the windows. So it, we really were focused on that floor, and. Um, for me, it in a way really stayed an enigma. So it, it stayed something that um, uh, uh, really challenges you and you don't find the answers um, so, so quickly. <laughs> mm. isn't, it, isn't it in a certain way the breaking of a taboo um, that when you, when you do an inclined slope in a house that you in a way as a human being you have to almost redefine yourself and your relation to space um, and again you know in like in architecture teaching in the schools this is kind of a you know we don't even talk about that you know can a can a floor be sloped right um, you can't live on a sloped floor um, and then you explain that this is a summer room. So then again, it seems to be that it is a space that is only used, you know, in certain seasons. It seems that it has no, except that this one bench and the uh, Cezanne ladder, um, there's no furniture. So it's, it's, it's about the human, you being inside the space and the space itself. Is that, um, would you agree with that? 
I think so. It's, but it's something more than that. Um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really, it really is a device for estrangement. So, um, if you if you look at the atmosphere in this within this space, you, um, I was I was. Re, 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 oh. Sorry. No, I can't. All these all these music devices you have there. No, no, these are so unfortunate. Um, uh, um, yeah, let's talk with music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, the atmosphere inside this space was um, quite similar to an old barn, which isn't used anymore. So um, mm. you know, where you are completely fascinated by the space, but you don't know how to relate to that space because you there is something like a connection to um, uh, uh, lost um, to the usage of this of this space. So mm. you 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 really have an opposition. You have the space there, and yourself you find yourself on on the on the opposite, and um, this. Uh, in a way, was was not making conscious for me the the, the act of, of of moving or the act of of of, um, of of or the presence of 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 a sloping of a sloping floor, but it it it, it more um, um, uh, provoked a feeling of, let's say. Um, Oh, that's me here, and over there it's architecture, something like that. So it it, it is something like you know, like in a in a Brechtian theater when the actor stands on the stage and starts talking about what he is doing. So I really got the information from that space that I am within an architectural object. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But this this notion of use or function, or in the, the way that you described it, disuse, is that even applicable to this project? I think the I I I, I came across the information that the that the original um, inhabitant, the the poet, to live in this house is not actually using it anymore. But from how I understand it, he was never going to use it in a functional way. It was more a house to house a maybe a feeling. Maybe the use in itself was that of a feeling or of an emotion of a space that reflected the needs of the, of the user rather than a functionality. Mm -hmm. I, I read that, that, his, that the client's description for what he needed was actually a poem. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not a not a use it not a functional brief. I mean, feeling was uh, a word that Shinara often used yeah. to describe his spaces that they evoke strong feelings or that they evoke kind of presence of something. It's um, also a term that we come across a lot in our collaboration with um, a Japanese, um, a different Japanese school, um, Kyoto Institute of Technology, who we're working mm. with in this semester. And this um, to us is often, we are not used to that, right? To talk about feelings in relation to spaces. We often shy away from mm. that. And I couldn't help but notice that also you, Taishin san you, you talked about feelings when referring to, or emotions when referring to Shinohara spaces as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not sure it has become the, the good answer, but maybe Shinohara's uh, idea about the function is quite, quite unique and it's uh, different from the general uh, usage. Mm -hmm. And the people mentioned the uh, three, three uh, uh, elemental. <clears throat> was the symbolic space and the ornamental space and functional space. Yeah. So that shows the uh, functional, the meaning of functional, it's not the function of the functionalism, maybe. 
and so ah i i wanna i wanna ask Thibault about that the cylinder scheme it's quite interesting uh way of mm -hmm. thinking actually uh, the shinohara said uh, let's stop the roulette and to see the these three words symbolic ornament ornament and functions but uh i want to ask Thibaut, why why you use this kind of how to say the cylinder scheme with a spiral kind of arrow in the timeline and also i want to hear the relationship with the word topology you use is there, is there any relations um, I would have to check if he already speaks of topology in this uh, uh, essay or in this very short, no, it's a short, quite a short article. I think two two pages in Shinken. No, no, it wasn't in Shinken. It was in Japanese. Mm. Art. I don't remember where he was. So he doesn't speak really about topology, but um, uh, I know that he was interested in topology this is for sure. He, he he mentioned the word twice or three times in the mm. available English texts. And um, the scheme is what you saw here in my lecture is, is an attempt to translate what he is describing. So um, mm -hmm. David Stewart um, mentioned that or thought that this cylinder was something that happened or that was created after um, reading um, Siegfried Gideon, who was who had also in space, time, and architecture, um, who made the relation to mathematics and uh, modern um, non-Euclidic um, uh, mathematics. So this is can be let's say, can be proved in, uh, um, uh, this relation can be proved because Shinohara really wanted to conceptualize um, architecture, maybe in the way how um, Gideon did. So I think it's quite plausible that this idea of the cylinder became in a way Virulent and virtual, also um, uh, for 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 his designs. I came to that through Graham Harmon, who says that there are many, there are ideas or there are texts within the lifespan of an artist or a politician or I don't know or or, or a warlord or, or somebody um, uh, that have an, an enormous influence on later events in the case of an architect on later designs so this was the, mm -hmm. the concept behind um, the attempt of translating Shinohara's uh, words into a into a drawing mm. oh, by the way it does it did very Typical to refer the object object oriented ontology in in Swiss now when when we think or discuss about architecture. No. No, 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 no yet. <laughs> I have I have heard like this connection between architecture and and um, this mm. theory for the first time. I found it really interesting, but I, I mm. I think that it's yeah, in, in, yeah, in, Jap yeah, in Japan, gradually young architects checked that theory, but uh, I have never uh, seen the Shinohara's project through OOO <laughs> yet. That may be quite exciting. But Ma, when, when I see the, your cylinder scheme for analyzing Shinohara's idea, I realize, uh, remember the uh, not all, all but uh, Tim Ingold. Maybe Tibon knows him. Tim Ingold. Tim Ingold? No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, he he, uh, he mentioned the 
some how to say the some object made by human and some object made by uh, nature. Yeah, it's almost same. He mentioned. So I will check so that. that it, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so what you know is there is there a notion of time in his in his thinking and in his architecture is that something that plays a role this is the first question and then the second question related to this um, time aspect is um, how does his work influence like your generation and the younger generation of architects in japan uh okay the the time mm -hmm. uh, uh so do not directly mentioned about time so much, but uh, interesting topic is uh, maybe eter et okay. eternity. Uh, he used that word when he designed about housing white, mm -hmm. because housing white, uh, what to say, must, must break down because of the government uh, government road plan how to say it? <laughs> so yeah. the government decided the wide road yeah to make and that it's put on the side of housing white then finally the housing white uh, moved to the different side but anyway in that kind of uh, accident, he mentioned about the architecture will remain in the uh, more different world, not, uh, not only the physical world. So that can be connected to the virtuality today Tibo mentioned. So the mm -hmm. uh, he uh, strongly believe his works will remain uh, in eternal if if that house is beautiful <laughs> so i i don't know if that if that meaning it's uh, uh, how to say ma it's related to the materiality and immateriality or not. I, I can, I'm not sure of that, but. Oh, yet at okay, the same, yeah. Yet at the same time, when we speak about time, Johannes, we discussed this earlier, um, eternity kind of points into a very distant or a future that will never happen. Whereas mm. the notion of time, I think in, in Japan, the the um, the concept of the past is also very important. And even though you say, Johannes, it's kind of fallen out of time or very timeless, um, traditional, essentially very Japanese spatial concepts play such an important role as well in Shinohara's work, don't they? The, the This simple and complex idea of the Doma, for example, is a very traditional element as well, is it not? You all? Or me? <laughs> yeah, uh, Shinohara thinks, uh, Shinohara always said uh, the tradition is uh, not the, uh, not the uh, final point. It's just a starting point. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, but uh, maybe we uh, generally many persons uh, check the traditional things after we become the late period, you know, the <laughs> uh, uh, our parents and grandparents always see the traditional things, mm -hmm. but uh, Shinohara always mentions, we must see the traditional things in the beginning point. And he gradually changed his, uh, his style to the more 
how to say, uh, shifted to the something looks not related to the traditions. Mm -hmm. Maybe, mm, maybe there is some his stance to the time is uh, in the kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second question is his heritage um, to the younger generation of, of contemporary architects in, in Japan today. Sorry? Has, has his work, has, has Shinohara's work um, yes. got a strong influence on um, today's practice of, of young architects uh, in, in Japan? Yes, as a standing point of me, I have to say the yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but actually maybe every young architect must must check the uh, Shinohara's standing point. We have to measure the distance from him mm -hmm. when we design something. Well, of course, not only him. We have to see the many other uh, many other masters. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you have a few as well. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Johannes, we didn't receive any questions from the audience. No, no. I think they were all intimidated. Um, if there are any, you would have to type very quickly now, those who are still with us. I would maybe um, a closing statement um, from our two colleagues, um, Taishin and Tibor. Um, to this wonderful talk today. Tibor, into the cold water. Maybe I could try to answer your questions, both of them. Um, uh, because if you look at his architecture, um, in a way, it is quite strongly bound to its time. So um, not, not um, in, not in, concerning some forms or concerning some concepts, but, but much more in the way how it is deconstructive, how it is um, experimental, how it is um, uh, trying to um, sense or trying to um, get to the margins of architecture, I think. So this is very strongly um, related to let's say the 60s and the 70s maybe also the 80s but but you were um uh, uh calling um timelessness i think this is something that really was that shinohara really was looking for um and i have the idea that he really was trying to find in every design, maybe in a different way, a space or something which um, really can can be autonomous, um, and not 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 the autonomy of the discipline of architecture. I mean, this is a European discussion. We don't have to <laughs> lead that here, but. Um, uh, what he, he, he might be interested in was to find something like, like an eigenvalue. This is a word he, he, he used, um, which um, also exists in English, not only in German. And he tried to find this eigenvalue for, for every design. And this, of course, makes it timeless because this eigenvalue is just for itself and can be grasped also, grasped also by younger architects by later generations and uh, some kind of retransformed into other designs. And uh, maybe somewhere there lies the timelessness mm -hmm. of uh, this spaceship-like um, distance to everything in some of his designs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the <clears throat> this final comment, Yes, please. 
<laughs> so maybe uh, important things is uh, when Shinohara deal with the materiality, he always think of, think about immateriality. And when he thinks about immateriality, always he see the materiality. So maybe the materiality and immateriality is uh, the both we have to uh, deal with because that is a uh, both side of coin maybe. So uh, that the kind of the so Shinohara used the word uh, dual phenomena or something. So uh, yeah, material is very to uh, yeah charming things and immateriality is of course the uh, also the very exciting <laughs> abstract, abstract things but but we have to see both sides of that i think mm. yeah thank you very good thank you <laughs> anika <laughs> You Would you like to? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. yes. Then I'm, I'm just going to make um, an observation, and that is this concept of naked space, which um, I actually read in a different source. It wasn't maybe so much talked about today. This idea that in the, um, in the Tanikawa house, a column is just a column, and uh, you know every, each element is just what it is. It is basically meaningless, or that is the the intention, um, the, the sheer paradox that we can spend hours, years, lives, books discussing the meaning of this meaninglessness is, <laughs> right? This is, the, this is a funny paradox in a way. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm just curious, this is maybe not a question that needs to be answered, but I'm just curious and maybe it's a little bit of a blasphemic question, whether this is an intended ambiguity or whether this is really a, a fruitfully failed experiment that can lead us on as sort of um, following or observing um, architects in, in experiencing Shinohara's architecture. I would say we leave this as an unanswered question. Um, and maybe we will get the answer at another occasion. Um, before I thank you two, um, I would really like to thank those who whose names we can see, but who are who are in the in the dark. Um, that is um, um, the colleagues who are doing the technical part of of um, this session and who have done this technical part of the previous sessions. Um, Yara Maleve, who left before, and Miriam Daube, thank you very much um, that this has worked again. Um, and Heike Bichtele, who has been organizing this whole series. Um, as every semester, she's, she's curating actually our, our lecture series. And I think it's uh, each time um, amazing whom we can talk to, whom we are meeting, and whom we can, you know, also um, present to our students. Um, I think this is a, a enormous um, privilege that we have to be able to do that. And now I'm um, with you too, Taishin and, and Tibor. It's been a great honor and um, a wonderful two hours, almost two hours listening to you and again i could have listened much longer um, um, there's so much that i don't know and there's so much to learn um, and uh, also you know this uh, question answer game i think is is really good fun and really interesting so again it's been an honor that you joined us taishin same to you tibor thank um, you very much and goodbye to everybody Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye and good night. Thanks.